All right, welcome back to another uh, kind of impromptu episode of Tunes of Cam Saint. Um, I'm here at St. Andrew's Church in Seattle, where they've graciously allowed me to practice. Um, and I am going to go through a tune for you called uh, Tinker Hill. This is one of my all-time favorite tunes. It comes from, um, at least I know it from the playing of John Skelton and Keanu Hare. Um, and it's a really unique tune in that you can, I think it's in D, but it's, it starts on a, or no, it's in, it's in G, but it starts on a D. So it's a really nice way to come out of some of those tunes that aren't really D and they aren't really A, kind of like the, um, uh, what's the, Flowers of Red Hill? Um, I might be totally wrong music theory-wise there, but um, anyway, it's a useful little tune to know, and it's just awesome. So here's uh, here's how the tune goes. basically how the tune goes um, and I'll show you how it can come out of like flowers of red hill the B part so it kind of has that nice benefit of starting on a D hanging out on the B and the A for a while before it finally goes to G. So it's a good way to get out of tunes that, um, you know, might be difficult to find like a nice pairing that's on the same key. Um, so anyway, it starts on a, it starts on a D. And I think the biggest thing you can do with this one is just change what octave you play some of the notes in. So that's at least how I hear that a little bit. Play that little part any way you like. That's, I think, how the tune actually um, is typically played. If, if you write it out, you can. But you can also do it in the low octave. And then one of the things I do on the end is rather than just playing um, the note, I kind of roll that into the next note. So that would be how it would be on the page again, but if you just connect those notes together. That kind of makes a nice little, uh, I, I guess kind of a mirroring of where you would typically breathe, which allows uh, more of the tune to come out in a different place. I thought that was kind of cool. Another kind of obvious thing you can do um, is change where you do that final roll in. Now uh, you can do it in the second octave, kind of give some energy to the the uh, second A part. You can also pause on that D instead of. Uh, instead of that, you can go. Um, and that's another another nice thing to do is just to put some long notes. Um, the faster you're playing a tune, the more contrasty a longer note is. Um, and I think it's kind of nice how it plays, almost like a drone with the other sounds of the instruments that are playing um, the entire melodic line. So that's something you can play around with. And then the B part, um, it's kind of interesting because it's a um, it's a crayon almost right away. Let's see. So da dum da la. Let's 
Uh, another thing you can do if you like, um, depending on how emphasized you want the crayon to be, if you want it to be light and delicate, you can um, just play that second octave D with your first finger down. Um, or if you want it to be a little bit more poppy and bubbly, like on the pipes, you can lift that first finger and play your second octave D. Um, and if you're really crafty, you can put it uh, down for the first part, uh, so that's light, and then you can pick it up. Um, which kind of helps amp that crayon up over the, um, the normal tone of that note. Um, Oh, and so another thing to do if you're not big into crayons, which again, we're not originally really a huge flute player thing until Matt Malloy came along. Um, some people did, I'm sure, but um, they weren't excessively common. So another perfectly acceptable way to play that tune is. I might, I might put something on the second one there, but. Um, and that's a nice, again, a nice kind of simple way to play it if you're really getting into um, kind of one of those very breathy rhythms, like. So I don't really play it that way, so it's a little bit awkward here, but um, another totally acceptable way to play that tune, uh, that part of the tune, and then further on in the B part, you can kind of push off that, um, that um, F sharp. And this is one of the places, you know, I, you know, I hate those descending uh, F sharp cuts that everybody seems to do these days like this. Um, it's just kind of, I don't know, I find it tedious and break, kind of breaks the, um, the flow of a tune generally, just because it's, you know, this is the easiest finger to flap like crazy. And so I guess people do it because they can. But um, this is actually one of those places where it does sound nice. Um, because that's kind of, I, I see that cut as kind of an answer to the, the call um, that the crayon set up, like this. That's kind of a, you know, that's something, and then what answers it, dun, 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 dun. Um, and it ha it's kind of one of those little internal phrases that you can pull out by um, by emphasizing those notes if you want. So I think that's a perfectly, perfectly acceptable place to do one of those uh, internal crayons, but generally I would say, see if you can find something more creative to do. Um, when you're coming down and you have one of those passing notes. But on this tune, it works. How would I do that if I wasn't going to do a crayon? Um, So a lot of different ways to play that. Um, I think the main thing is to get the, um, you know, get those big uh, D notes in there. However you want to emphasize them, whether it's a crayon, whether it's breath, whether it's kind of getting that um, kind of split tone between the octaves, um, just I think emphasizing that and then playing off the D to the G kind of transition. And you can do a little, uh, kind of 16th note run there. You can also do that if you want. Eh, I don't know. I don't think that sounds great, but you can do it if you like. Do it if you like. Um, so here's here's the other part that um, is really important. After you do the, I kind of like to give it that weird um, kind of double cut deal. See, it's a breath, and then, um, and I just feel like that helps kind of pick up the energy again after that that first line. I love that little dun da 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 dun. And this is another place where you can pull off the D there to make um, to make your E kind of slide in. Um, and so then it 
fold back into the rest of the tune. So anyway, I'm just gonna play this tune a couple times. So I think that little stumble there kind of highlights um, the difference between coming up with, you know, having, having these things emerge naturally, these variations, versus trying to put in as many different ones as you can. Um, and so at least when I was first starting out trying to think about how, you know, to use melodic variation as well as all these wonderful, you know, cuts and taps and everything else, um, I think the main thing the main thing I did was I, I just practiced them. Like, you know, I, I'd say, okay, the first time I go around, I'm gonna play it straight. The next time I'm gonna do this variation. The next time I'm gonna do this one. And just kind of building up in your hands the palette of different options you have. Um, it's very challenging just to think of something on the spot. And certainly I couldn't, um, you know, think of something, play it successfully, and then come back to the, you know, kind of the bass tune um, all at once. And so by practicing these things, um, Kind of mechanically at first it actually allows them then to come kind of unprovoked uh, when you're just playing a tune um, so i highly encourage you again you know singing the tune um, is where a lot of these are going to come from is you're removing the physicality and the, the dip, uh, difficulty of playing the instrument uh, from the equation just thinking about the tune which is really what it's about um, and so just by kind of screwing around with that, you can get a lot of interesting ideas. Um, you know, if you happen to have a good one, you know, maybe pull out your phone, use the voice recorder, and um, even if you can't sing, it's just, it's where a lot of good ideas I find come from rather than just noodling around on the flute. Um, because it, at least for me on the flute, you know, your hands get so used to certain things that you really like to do, it's hard to kind of challenge yourself to do what, you know, sounds good in your head as well as just what feels good under your hands. Um, Cause some of the coolest embellishments are just awkward as heck. So like, I think that's for the, the Eilish Brogan tune. Some of these are just really awkward. I really hate the, hate, hate coming back from the, the C natural to the G just you know, from a physical standpoint, but it sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, it's just melodic variation, play with it, practice it, um, and then it'll come out naturally. So don't just try to think of stuff on the spot and then crash and burn on the tune and then feel like you don't wanna try it again. Um, you know, play with it on your own and then um, just let it come out naturally. And then the more the more this stuff sits under your hands, the more you're going to feel um, confident, just even varying, you know, your practice variations. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope this was interesting and I'll see y'all next time.